Great day mi vida, tu eres soy, en ti me gloriaré. Es por tu cruz que salvo soy, no te olvidaré. Después de tu Getsemaní, subiste a la cruz más cruel. Todo sufriste tú por mí, yo quiero serte fiel. Más vi la luz amanecer de la eternidad. Te vi, Señor, aparecer con inmortalidad. Después de tu Getsemaní, subiste a la cruz más cruel. Todo sufriste tú por mí. Yo quiero serte fiel, Rey de mi vida, Rey de luz, en ti me gloriaré. Por mí moriste en la cruz, no te olvidaré. Después de tu Getsemaní, subiste a la cruz más cruel, todo sufriste tú por mí, yo quiero serte fiel. All right, let's go through our Bible verse today. We're in uh, Primer Timoteo 1.15. And uh, I'll read it to you, then we can read it together as a class. Palabra fiel y digna de ser recibida de todos, que Cristo Jesús vino al mundo para salvar a los pecadores, de los cuales yo soy el primero. All right, let's read it together. Palabra fiel y digna de ser recibida de todos, que Cristo Jesús vino al mundo para salvar a los pecadores, de los cuales yo soy el primero. All right, so let's go through our vocabulary list. We're going to learn some of these uh, cardinal numbers. You know, you have the cardinal numbers, the ordinal numbers. You have the ones where you're just saying one, two, three, four, and then we've got the first, second, third. El primero is the first. El segundo is the second. El tercero is the third. All right? And then we're going to do a little bit of a review today of our reflexive verbs, and then we're going to learn about direct objects. So here's another reflexive verb, enojarse, to get angry. And then digno means worthy. That's from our Bible verse. Fiel means faithful. Ponerse, another reflexive verb, to put on clothing. Quitarse, to take off clothing. El sombrero, the hat, and la chaqueta, the jacket. All right. Let's go through the verse word by word quickly, though. Palabra, who remembers that? That's one of our vocabulary words. Word. word, word. Palabra, fiel, which means what? So, faithful word, you know, it's saying, y digna, and worthy. De ser recibida, to be received. De todos, of all. Okay, in English this is, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, okay? Que Cristo Jesús, that Christ Jesus, vino al mundo, came into the world, para salvar a los pecadores, to save sinners, right? Para salvar a los pecadores, de los cuales yo soy el primero, of the which I am chief, of whom I am chief. Okay, you got it? So it's palabra fiel y digna de ser recibido de todos, que Cristo Jesús vino al mundo para salvar a los pecadores, de los cuales yo soy el primero. And then we're going to talk about direct object pronouns. But first let's do a quick review of our reflexive verbs, okay? Now, remember that we drew this chart up in the right corner of our reflexive pronouns, okay? These are the pronouns that we need to remember. Me, te, se, nos, and say, okay? And then one of the ones that we did last week that was pretty easy was lavarse, okay? Which means what? Lavar. To wash would be uh, lavar, and if we put a say on the end, lavarse means to wash oneself, okay? So for example, if I want to say, I'm washing my hands, we would say, me lavo. So remember, this reflexive pronoun always goes what? Right before the conjugated verb. Me lavo los manos. 
and you don't say my hands, you basically say literally I'm washing myself the hands, okay? So you could say, me lavo los manos, you could say, me lavo el pelo, which would mean what? Wash. Me lavo el pelo, I'm washing my hair, okay? So we're going to do a few review examples here on our new list. Enojarse means to get, to get angry, okay? So we can tell, obviously, that this is an AR verb, enoja. The say just means that it's reflexive, okay? So the first thing we need to do is just conjugate enoja, which would be what? Eno, enojo, enojas. Enoja, enojamos, enojan, okay? And remember, get the accent in the right place. Enojo, enojas, enoja, enojamos, enojan, okay? And then in order to make these reflexive, you know, it's just basically going to have the reflexive pronoun in front of it. Me enojo, what would that mean? I'm, well, it means, it means I'm getting angry, I'm becoming angry. Okay? Me enojo means I'm, I'm becoming angry right now. Okay? Or what would this one be? Nos enojamos, right? Se enoja. Se enoja. And te enojas. So how would I say they are becoming angry? What would be the first word that I'm going to write? Well, first let's get a subject. With third person, it's good to use a subject. With these ones, you don't really need it, but we'd say ellos. Say, and no on means they are getting angry. Okay. So what we learned about reflexive verbs last week is that basically there are two types of reflexive verbs. There are verbs where you're doing the action to yourself. Okay. Like for example, I'm washing myself. Me lavo. Okay. But then there are other ones like this that are just reflexive. I mean, you're not really doing it to yourself. It's not like you're making yourself angry but it's just idiomatic, it's just a reflexive verb. That's just how you say it in Spanish, you just use reflexive verbs. Remember last week, for example, ducharse means to take a shower. Me ducho means I'm showering myself, okay? But for example, other ones such as, you know, um, decidirse, which means what? To decide, to make up your mind, okay? Me decido, ellos se enoja. It's not that they're making themselves angry. It's like when I say, me aburo. Remember that one from last week? That means I'm getting bored. It doesn't mean that I'm boring myself. It's just a reflexive verb. So there's two kinds of reflexive verbs. There are those where you're doing the action to yourself, and then there are those that look like you're doing it to yourself, but that's just how you say it in Spanish, okay? And then what's the most famous example of a reflexive verb? Llamarse, right? Como se llama usted? Me llamo, I call myself. Okay, so we got one of our new ones out of the way, enojarse, to get angry. Now, let's talk about ponerse and quitarse, okay? This, this is for putting on your clothing, ponerse, and then quitarse is for removing your clothing, okay? So, let's see, we, we picked a couple of uh, articles of clothing to learn about, el sombrero. It doesn't just mean like the, the sombrero that you're thinking of. The word sombrero just means hat in Spanish. And then la chaqueta means the jacket. So let's say we wanted to say he is removing his hat. Okay? How are we going to say that? He is removing his hat. We're going to start with what? L. Okay. L. Say. And then we, we need a verb here. Are we using ponerse or quitarse? He's removing his hat. He's taking off his hat. Okay, so how are we gonna how are we gonna conjugate? It's an AR verb. Here's our stem right there, right? He, el se, el se quita, and then uh, what are we gonna say for the hat? It's, we're not gonna put his hat. Okay, in Spanish you don't do that. You just it's already reflexive. That already tells you that he's doing it to himself. So it's el se quita, el sombrero. So that would be translated in English as, he is removing his hat. Okay? You got that? Now, the verb poner 
is pretty regular. It has one irregularity. If you remember back when we were conjugating ER verbs, a lot of them pick up a G in that first person. So when we conjugate the verb poner, we'll start with our stem here. This one's pretty, you know, ponen, ponemos, pone, pones. This one just picks up a G. A lot of them in the first person pick up a G. Like traigo, hago, um, tango, bango. So, uh, pongo. So if I wanted to say, I am putting on my jacket, we would say what? We don't need the I. You know, first and second person usually leave that out. So how do I say, I'm putting on my jacket? Me pongo la chaqueta. Okay, and if I wanted to say I'm taking off my jacket, it would be what? Me quito la chaqueta. Can I do it wrong? Chiquita. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really small jacket. All right, so. Me pongo la chaqueta. Or I would say what? Me quito. Me quito la chaqueta, me pongo la chaqueta. Okay, got it? So it's a little bit different than English with these reflexive verbs. You have to remember, if you're doing it to yourself, it's reflexive. Whereas in English, if you're doing it to a party by, you say like, I'm combing my hair. Okay, and it's a direct object. Whereas in Spanish, it's like, I comb myself the hair. Okay, so it's just kind of weird the way they say it. That's how they do it. So, any questions about that? That gives you a little review of uh, reflexive from last week, right? Okay, so that's the new reflexive verbs, and then keep working on the ones from last week. Lavarse, to wash yourself. Cortarse, to cut your hair, or nails, or whatever. Afeitarse, to shave. Acabarse, to come to an end. Now, these are reflexive pronouns. We're going to learn a different set of pronouns today. Okay, we are going to learn direct objects. Okay? Now just make sure everybody understands what the direct object is. Let's say I were to say something as in, I I give the car to him. Okay? Now, this is our subject, I. This is the verb, right? Give. The car is what I'm giving, okay? So this is the object that receives the action, okay? I give the car, so this is the direct object, okay? To him, that's the indirect object, okay? Got that? So if I said like, I, I hit him, okay? You know, who am I hitting? Him. What am I giving? The car, okay? These are direct objects. Indirect object is like you're giving it to him, or uh, well, we'll give other examples when we go into indirect objects, but just to give you a, a basic idea of what a direct object is. So the direct object pronouns are very similar to the reflexive pronouns. In the first and second person, they're exactly the same, in fact. Me, te, nos, and then this would be os if we were learning it. Os. And then here, instead of say, though, we're going to have lo and la, okay? And then over here, we're going to have los and las. So this is similar to the word the, right? In Spanish, we have el, la, los, las. So this is the only different one, lo, right here, okay? So these are direct object pronouns. And these are the reflexive pronouns, okay? So just a little bit of a difference there in the third person. So let's do some examples here. If I were to say... Tango, I have the, whoops, I have the car, right? Now, this is, it, what part of speech is this here? Is this a noun or a pronoun? That's a noun, right? But if we wanted to replace it with a pronoun, in English, instead of saying I have the car, we would say what? I have it. Now, in order to say I have it in Spanish, we're going to use our direct object pronouns. Okay? So we'll, we'll use what word to represent el coche? 
which of these pronouns? Low. Okay? Now, just as the reflexive verb goes right, I'm sorry, the reflexive pronoun goes right before the conjugated verb. Remember, like, me pongo, me afeto. Same thing with the direct object pronoun. It goes right before the verb. So this is going to be lo tango. That means I have it. Okay? So, go ahead and do another one. first and second person. Like, for example, I wanted to say, he I'm drawing a blank here. I need the old lessons as all the words that we've been trying to use words that everybody knows here. Let's see. Um, okay, Buscar. What does Buscar mean? Anybody know? Huh? Is it to show? No. But the, I'm trying to think of words that you know. What are some of the words that we learned? Some of the verbs. When we were doing the AR verbs, we did what? Hablar, escuchar. I'm trying to think of like transitive, transitive verbs so that we can have good objects here. Put. What's that? How about yamar? That's a good one. All right. Yamar means what? I usually have the old lessons with me to know which vocab we down over. Okay. Yamar means to call. Okay. So let's say you want to call someone. Okay. How would I say she is calling me? We're going to start with what? Yeah. Ella. Okay, now where, where do we put our direct object pronoun in this whole thing? It goes before the conjugated verb. So if I want to say, she is calling me. Ella me llama. She is calling me. Right? Now, let's say uh, we wanted to say tango. We wanted to say like L tiene en la casa. How we do it? This is what we're eliminating and turning into a pronoun. So where are we gonna start with L? Lo. It's feminine, right? So it's got a match. So we're gonna say L la tiene. He has it, right? Now, remember this verse that we did a while back, where we said, um, Si dijeremos que no hemos pecado, lo hacemos a él mentiroso, y su palabra no está a nosotros, okay? That was what, 1 John 1.10 or something like that? Let's look at that verse now that we know about direct objects. Okay, C means what? You learned that earlier on? Yeah. If, si dijeremos, if we were to say, si dijeremos que, that, right? No, hemos pecado. And if you remember this from back when we were doing our past participle, if we say that we have not sinned, okay? Lo hacemos. Okay? What does this mean right here? Lo hacemos. Hacer is what? Hacer means to make or to do. So if we say hacemos, we make him. Okay? Because that's our direct object pronoun. 
Because in English, what, what would these be in English? Maybe this will help too. What would these be in English? This would be me, you, us, right? This would be them. And this would be either him or her or it. Okay? So those are our three choices here. So this can either mean we make him or we make it. It doesn't mean her because obviously it's masculine because la would be her. So lo hacemos means we make him. Okay? We make him. And then a él, lo hacemos a él, that's just basically restating. It's like emphasizing the fact that we make him a liar, so the a él is repetitive. Okay? Lo hacemos a él mentiroso. We make him a liar. Okay? Y su palabra no está en nosotros. Okay, so that helps us understand that verse. So if I just wanted to say like, Let's say I wanted to say, hacemos un sombrero. Okay, what would that mean? Hacemos un sombrero. We're making a hat, right? So what if I want to say, we're making it? And we don't want to say the hat, we just want to say, we're making it. Like, hey, where are you going to get the hat? Well, we're making it. We would just say what? Lo hacemos, okay? What if I wanted to say, you, what's that? If it was hacemos sombreros, then it would be los hacemos. Okay, yeah, let's say, let's say we wanted to say, hacemos los sombreros. Okay, we make it plural. We're making the hats, then we could just say los hacemos. Okay, so it's always going right before the verb, and it's going to match up with whatever it's replacing, both in gender and in number, masculine versus feminine, singular versus plural. Okay, if we wanted to say you are making the jackets, you're making the jackets. Okay, then we would say. Haces, or if we were emphasizing the fact that you're making it, we could say, tu haces las chaquetas, right? But if we were just to use a pronoun and we're going to replace las chaquetas with you're making them, then we would say what? Tu, like if someone was asking the question, well, who's making the jackets? So we want to emphasize that it's you that's making it. We'd say, tu las haces. So we could say like, quien, you know the word quien, who? Quien hace las chaquetas? Who's making the jackets? Tu las haces. See what I mean? It would be silly to keep repeating like, who is making the jackets? You are making the jackets. You know, you just say, tu las haces. It's just a, a different way of speaking. So does everybody understand this? And does everybody see the difference between this and this? Reflexive is when you're doing it to yourself. This is when you're doing it to something or someone else. Okay, that's the difference between a direct object and a reflexive pronoun. So the me, the te, the nos, and the os, you're just going to know from the context. Whereas the third person, totally different. Se versus lo, la, los, las. Okay? So I think that should explain everything in here um, as far as the new reflexive verbs, the new words. Uh, now, let's, let's do a quick review on this adjective that we're learning today. Fiel, okay, means what? Faithful, okay. Now, let's say we wanted to say faithful word, like the name of our church. How would we say the faithful word? And start with what? La. Palabra fiel. Now, what if we wanted to make this plural? We'd say what? Las palabras. And then what would we do with this? Throw an ES on the ES. Las palabras fieles. Okay? 
Now, if you remember when we were back when we were doing adjectives, adjectives that end in an O, with masculine words you have an O, with feminine words you have an A. But if they end in any other letter, they're the same for masculine and feminine. But they still need to be made plural. Just like in uh, the, the colors, for example, uh, rojo means red, but roja would be for feminine. Rojos would be plural. Los coches rojos. Las chaquetas rojas. Okay? Well, with, ver with adjectives that end in a different letter, neither O nor A, like for example, verde, green, you still have to make a plural though every time, like verdes. Las chaquetas verdes. La palabra fiel, las palabras fieles, the faithful words, plural. Okay? And then digno, the other adjective that we're learning today, if we wanted to say, you know, the worthy gentleman, it would be el hombre, what? Digno. And if we wanted to say the worthy lady, we would say la mujer digna. Or los hombres dignos. Okay? So, that's a little review. But the main thing that we needed to learn today was just the difference between reflexive pronouns, myself, yourself, ourselves, his self, themselves, and then me, us, him, just direct objects, where the subject and the object are two different things, okay? So let's sing our song one more time before we take off. <laughs>